evening we have Reverend Devin Lindsay um, for our Bible study. Um, the pastor that um, was with us on Sunday, he could not be here this evening. So um, Reverend Lindsay is the um, feature for this evening. And we, we welcome him to Jerusalem Baptist Church. I know he have not um, did his sermon yet, but we are looking forward to see it here and that. So we will ask Reverend Linde to pray and he can get started in his own way. Okay. Well, grace, mercy, and peace for you from God our Father. God has given us grace and God commands that we share that grace with one another. I'm excited to be able to share with you guys this evening as we study the word of God uh, and study our conviction and the faith. Uh, let me apologize that on Sunday, you know, I was scheduled to be with you guys that I had gotten sick and was demonstrating COVID symptoms and then um, an abundance of care. I asked the deacons if it would be possible. Um, we had some mix-ups because I was sick that week, but I'm well and I'm grateful and I want to do things in decency and order. Um, but I am uh, happy to be able to have this opportunity uh, to share. Um, I think it's particularly uh, more important that you learn the heart of a leader, not just through what they say on the pulpit on Sunday, but how we are able to interpret the word of God uh, throughout the week. No church can really be bigger than its Bible study uh, because we want to come to God with head and heart. The Bible says, love the God, the Lord thy God with all that heart and in th their mind. A lot of people love God with their heart, but they don't use enough of their mind. And so Bible study is an opportunity for us to engage in what I can call critical um, study and in-depth study that we would be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Would you bow with me so we can have a word of prayer before we engage? And I may stand up a little bit because I'm a, a little hyper. Let, let's pray. Father, how we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to share in your word. We pray, oh God, that you would give us insight and wisdom. We pray that we would learn something from the scriptures that we had not learned before. We pray that we would hide the word in your, our hearts, that we would not sin against you. I'm reminded, oh God, that you tell us to hide the word in our hearts. Because you know, inevitably, sometimes the world will break our hearts. But if when the world breaks our hearts, your word falls in our hearts and brings us to a place of healing. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Amen. How's everybody doing? Well, um, I wish I had um, uh, I, some, a, a board behind me because I like to be interactive uh, and I like to, uh, you know, uh, uh, speak with people, uh, engage people in, the, in an interactive way. Um, but we're going we're gonna to look at Psalms, the 23rd chapter, Psalms 23. Um, and I need three volunteers. I need somebody to get Psalms 23 um, from the King James Version. I need someone to, uh, you can just Google it wherever you are, to get Psalms 23 from the um, uh, New Revised Standard and somebody to get it from the Message Bible. So I need three different people to volunteer. So I need somebody to do it from the King James. I think I said that first, right? Uh, the New Revised Standard. And I need somebody to read it from the message. And let me know. It, um, let me see if I can see everybody. I don't know. I'm, uh, maybe I'll randomly pick out people. Is that okay? Let's see. I can do the... Um the King James Bible. That's okay. We got a volunteer for King James. Good. Yeah. Ready? Uh, yeah. I want to call our volunteers. Mrs. Um, Farmer? Yes. I can um, do the message. Psalms 23 from the message. Okay. We're going to end with the message. The message Bible. Yeah. And then we need somebody for New Revised Standard. So we'll start with Psalms 23 from the King James Version. Let's, let, you, you can begin, Deacon. All right. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will feel no evil, for thy art with me. That rod and that staff shall comfort me. That they prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Though thy none of my head before, a cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Can you read it in the King James Version? Who? 
okay. in the house of the Lord. I, I, that was the King James Version. I okay. think. Oh, that's the KJV. Oh, no. King James Version. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. And can I get from the Message Bible? Just the one. Um, we could, I'm sorry, not the, we could, we could, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so we could okay, do this is Psalms 23 from the good the message Bible. Okay, God, my ship, God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows, you find me quiet pools to drink from. True to the word. I'm sorry, hold on. Bye. Sorry about that. No problem. Take your time. Yeah. So, so uh, if you're online, we want you to mute the background so we can uh, um, hear everybody. So you can start over um, this phone. Okay. Psalms 23 from the Message Bible. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from, true to your word. You let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the waves go through death valley, I am not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook makes, makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my dropping head. My cup brims with blessings. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. That was from the Message Bible. Okay. So we heard it from the King James Version and we heard it from the Message Bible. I, I like to, whenever we read scripture, it's important that sometimes we read scripture. Um, well, let's say it like this. The uh, Old Testament scripture is written in Hebrew. And the New Testament scriptures are written in Greek, and they're translated into our English versions of the Bible. And sometimes when we read in different translations, you're able to assess things and hear things that you may have missed in other translations. Sometimes just reading the Bible in different translations can serve as a kind of commentary, a kind of uh, clear understanding. Um, so sometimes you may read certain things in scriptures, and they kind of be, they're kind of complex. If you read it from different languages, it helps to give you, or a different translation, it'll help to give you um, a better understanding of the scripture. But I wanted to start off with Psalms 23 for two reasons. And if I had to label this Bible study out, you can write it down. I, I would call it uh, confidence in crisis, a careful examination of how God secures us during difficult times. I wanted to look at this, one, because it teaches us how to examine life in crisis, and there's certainly different crises going on in our world, and we'll go over them. But I think the Psalms 23 is also particularly a good book to study, a good um, division of Psalms to study, because it also provides us a fresh analysis of the role of a shepherd in the life of the sheep. You guys, you being a community of people who are trying to discern the voice of God for what a shepherd looks like or what a shepherd could be, Psalms 23 kind of gives us some level of insight. So uh, I, when I was looking at it, I was really just thinking about the context of how David is seeing God in the context of everyday crisis. But then when I thought about it uh, and, gave, and given the unique situation uh, of you guys, the church, Jerusalem, looking for uh, a leader, I thought that it also fit to, to, to mind the text to see some of the core qualities of ultimately what a shepherd uh, is supposed to, to be. Uh, Peter tells us in First Peter that we are to over the body of God, Christ as pastors, as shepherds. So this is going to serve uh, two purposes. I'm looking at my notes as I, I, I talk. But before we can go into uh, the, the Psalms uh, 23, let's talk some general housekeeping rules about Psalms. Because uh, most people in our Christian African-American Baptist church, we quote the Psalms, you know. Uh, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And uh, we read them. We've been taught to read them as scripture. But really, the Psalms are not, they're our scripture, but it's ancient Israel's hymn book. They didn't quote Psalms, they sung the Psalms. These songs were sung during times of pilgrimage and during times of festivals. There's certain songs of ascent. And so these are absolutely, you can think of the book of Psalms as the hymn book, 
You know that red book we got in the Baptist church? Well, this is their red book in the middle of your Bible. Uh, this is their red book. And you know how hymns keep us, how hymns sustain us. You know when you hear great is our faithfulness, the strength you get out of that. Or lead me, guide me. You know the strength you get out of that. So I want us to think of the Psalms not just in terms of something that we quote, but to think of the Psalms in the context that these people sung those songs. Because in singing, we are a singing people as African-American people. Um, and I think that it's important that just like we sang the blues and just like we sang, because inside the Psalms, check this out. Um, they, they're not just singing God's praise inside the Psalms. Sometimes they're singing the blues. David said, oh, spare me that I may recover strength uh, before I go hence and be no more. I, I searched all over and where can I find you? I am a desperate man. Sometimes the psalmist is singing the blues. The psalmist is not always singing about uh, his adoration for God. Sometimes the psalmist is singing about his frustration with God. And if we be honest, all of us have songs in our lives that express both our adoration and a frustration. And, and, and I like that because that means that the psalmist is being human. He's not acting as if that every day with God is sunshine. But he is recognizing that he or she is recognizing that they're in a certain kind of relationship with God, that God gives them a song during life's difficult times. So one of the misconceptions is that we quote songs, but songs were really sung. Another mis uh, 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 misconception before we get into Psalm 23 is that psalms is a book. No, there are multiple books. So if you hear somebody stand up and say, I'm reading from the 23rd Psalm. No, it's the 23rd book of Psalms. You're not. You're reading from the 23rd division of Psalms. Psalms has five different books. And I'm sure you guys heard this before, but I'll, I'll go over it. Um, so inside the book, inside that hymn book, those hymns are broken up into five different sets of hymns. The first set is from one to 41. That's a book itself. So, uh, we're reading from the first book of Psalms, the 23rd division. So right now we're going to be looking at the 23rd division of the first book of Psalms. But the second book of Psalms is 42 to 72. The third book is 73 through 89. The fourth book is 90 through 106. And the last book is 107 through uh, to 150. Now, it, it, it's important to know that there are all kinds of songs. There are songs of lament. There are songs of praise. There are songs of um, thanksgiving. There are songs about just the community, the strength that's in the community. And so throughout these books, you're hearing different variations. Um, and it's kind of important, you know, knowing what division it, it is is not that important, but but knowing that we're dealing with people in different phases of their lives, and I would I would categorize the different books as different phases uh, of, of Israel's journey with God. Uh, so when we get, and there are different authors who write songs, but one of the most well-known authors of the Book of Psalms, um, of one of the divisions of Psalms, is King David, uh, and we all know the story of King David, how he comes to be king. Uh, but what was very clear from the onset when we talk about the life of David in relation to Psalms 23 is that David is a worshiper. Worship. That word worship really means when I say David is a worship, and I want you to write this now. We're reading Psalms 23, and it's penned by this worshiper. Worship comes from the, the uh, uh, old English means, means to be worth or, or, uh, or to value or ship, the value of something. So our worship is the value we subscribe to God. So whenever we're in worship, we're saying that there's a certain kind of value that I have in my experience with God. And so David, this worshiper, uh, pins the 23rd Psalm. What is interesting about the 23rd Psalms, and I want you to write this down, is that it reflects, like most songs that we sing, it reflects the social and cultural location of the writer. It reflects David's background. David is speaking about God. And his understanding of God. And his understanding of God comes from his understanding of context. That's very important, right? 
Because sometimes we mistake our context for our God. No, your context is one understanding of God. And other people have different contexts. I'll give you another example. There is a fundamental difference um, in the context of white worship and in the context of African-American worship, right? When you go to a, 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 a European church, nothing wrong, nothing wrong, just different contexts. You hear songs like, uh, all hail the power of Jesus' name. God is one who reigns, right? They, 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 uh, 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 Yahweh, we praise. God is high and lifted. Their context demands them to see a God who is primarily what you call transcendent. So God is both, I'm going to clear that. They see a God that's transcendent. So they sing songs about God being the king, God being the ruler. In the African-American context, you take, so a European context, they'd be singing, or hail the power of Jesus' name. In the black church, you're saying, how are you going to pay your rent? All your money spent. A little bit to find some food. Baby, needs it. Jesus is going to work it out. We see a God who's imminent, who is engaged in human suffering. One sees a God who reigns because their privileges allow them, nothing wrong with that, to primarily worship a God who's king. But we see God in a context where not only is he's king, but he's savior. A better way of saying this is that context is about God. Sometimes we see God as transcendent, beyond the sky, a sky God, or God is imminent. That means here, personal with us. So we know that David, based upon his context, sees a God not only who wants to ward over him, a God not only to be praised because he is high and mighty. David talks to us about a God who is meek. This brings us to this understanding of shepherd. Listen to what David says. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, you remember he gets this from this context because David is also a shepherd. And he thinks David thinks he's a pretty good shepherd. Remember when the lion and bear came to come to eat up David's sheep? Remember the scripture says, uh, when they came to eat up Jethro, see, that I, I, uh, I slung the rock and I fought off the lion and bear. That David knows how to protect sheep. David is a pretty good shepherd. And David is saying, I'm a good shepherd. I know. Uh, I'm a good king. But then this is what he says. But there's a shepherd that is above my skill. The Lord is my shepherd. So think what David is saying. David is saying, I am competent. I am powerful. But what undergirds my competency and my power is a greater power. It's a greater security. It is for us to understand that all of our resources, energy, and efforts in our personal or vocational lives are connected to a larger God who undergirds that. Right? So it, it tells us, remember I told you, so David has this security because he sees, I, I want you to hear this. You can place, write this down. You can place no more value in God than you have in yourself. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Don't get scared. That David has to see the goodness inside himself to be able to say that this, even in the good in me, there's a person whose good and power supersedes me. Good quality worship starts with the understanding, managing conflict and crisis starts with the understanding that while God has all power, God has also given you power. David's a good shepherd. You get that? And sometimes we got to see that we cannot praise and worship God if we're going to deny the power and that God has placed in us. That, 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 because this is going to become important as we deal into the scripture, how you're going to handle conflict. You'll never be able to have conflict in crisis if all you see is the power of God and not the power that God put in you. I know y'all don't believe this, but here it is. I'm going to give it to y'all. Y'all ready? Remember when the Bible says, think about this. Oh, I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. I'm the God of Jacob. Well, think about this. If a Abraham wasn't anybody and Jacob didn't tap into his power uh, and Isaac 
never came into who he was as a person. God would be nobody to be that God. Why would God be boasting? It's as if God says, it's like nobody goes around saying, about talking about that child who failed. Nobody says, you know that boy who failed the second grade? You know that girl who dropped out of school? You know that girl who got dead? I'm her parent. No, you, people, you, you still their parent. Nobody, nobody gives us on their children. Nobody gives up on their child because of problems. But when you boast about your child, you're usually talking about some achievement. I, so I want you to see this because David starts off this song with a belief in his own power, a power that comes from his God, right? Watch this though. And this says something about, I'm going to be all over the place and y'all can ask questions a little bit because I'm going to get into them. Remember I told you I want to talk about how we handle crisis and, and looking for the role of a shepherd, even as you discern shepherd, look at who you're looking for. Listen, for David was a shepherd. He ultimately saw that God was a more powerful shepherd. But David's power and strength was in concert with that of the shepherd. In other words, it was a shepherd speaking to a shepherd. Sometimes we see, sometimes what it means, sometimes people see pastoral leadership and see what it means to be shepherd as, as somebody covering you while ignoring the power that's in you. It's a partnership. It's not. I'm the shepherd, and, and I have all power. No, the shepherd can't really be the shepherd until he owns and recognizes the power that's also in the sheep. So that, that, that's what I'm trying to get you to see. So, so David says, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes it very, very personal. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, he, he uses the word shepherd because David is connected to sheep. He's connected to this particular kind of model. And he sees the same thing that he does for his sheep. He sees God doing for him. And so as you look at the, throughout the text, you start to see David tell us the role and the responsibility of what a shepherd does. He uses this imagery because he's trying to get us. Now notice he says, my, the personal pronoun, that he's suggesting that I have an individual relationship with God. Watch this. This is a hymn book that's connected to a community. But in this hymn book, David is singing about his personal relationship with God that we don't work as a community uh, unless we all identify individually what, we, what power we find in God, right? That, that power we praise communally, but that power we find personally. That's why we all have to come into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So he says, he's my shepherd, that I have some uh, personal connection with him, which means that every shepherd has to, if he's going to be a shepherd, develop some personal relationship with sheep. You can't be a shepherd and only pass to some sheep. You can't be a shepherd and not intimately get engaged with the sheep, right? Uh, the, the, the shepherd smells like sheep. And it is not until you get this radical understanding that shepherd and sheep are this intimate dual partnership and relationship, do you see ultimately the real power that's unpacking in this text? Once, can y'all please hold somebody, he's knocking at my door, I know. Hi, my apologies. Somebody's not my door. I know who it was. Okay, we go. So, so the, he said he's my shepherd. So shepherds have to have personal relationship with sheep. It is important because what will happen is when the, the only reason the sheep ultimately trust the shepherds is because in that time, the shepherd would pick up the scent. It's like your dog. They, they, they've been around each other so much that they smell like each other. And I think that this is important when you, and I'm not telling you what to look for as a pastor. I really just wanted to talk about songs. But I think it's important that in a world where um, preaching has become very celebrity oriented, um, uh, where, where, where the preacher is a star and not a shepherd, where the preacher is a celebrity and not a shepherd. Uh, and, and, and sometimes sheep can't trust some pastors who say that they're pastors because they look like everything but a shepherd. So let's, let's go. The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, and let's watch how this sounds. 
I shall not want. Now, that is actually a misreading uh, of the Hebrew where it's translated in the Hebrew. Um, when, when, how actually it's translated in the Hebrew um, says, the Lord is my shepherd. You guys can go research and I'll, I'll put some more material out there so you can see it. I lack nothing is the accurate reading. So the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. It, it is suggesting that because he's my shepherd, all of my, the necessities of my life are provided. It is not suggesting that, oh, because the Lord is my shepherd, I'm going to get a Bentley, I'm going to get a heart. It's not saying that, that, that the Lord is my shepherd, I'll be always having some level of gross materialism uh, or that I'll never have a problem, right? That the Lord is my shepherd, that I'll never run into actual a crisis. Actually, it's quite the contrary. You're, you're going to run into a crisis, and I, 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 um, but you're not going to lack anything. It, it, it's, it's even more power than saying that um, I shall not want. It is saying that even in lack, I'm not going to lack. I think this is important, right? Because with the inflation and gas prices going up, I need you to know it doesn't matter how much bread it's going to cost. You got to say to yourself, I'm going to eat. I may not eat steak. I may not eat filet mignon. But the Lord is my shepherd. And, and I'm proof to you that I'm not going to lack. Because he meets my basic necessities. As you read, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in still waters, front of still waters. What are you saying? I know I'm not going to lack because he's always going to give me something to drink. And he says, uh, 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 um, he maketh me to lie down. That's when the sheep is grazing the pasture. He makes sure that I eat. And, 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 and so David's saying, Yes, I go through conflict and crisis, but one thing I can tell you about my shepherd is that regardless of what's going on around me, I'm going to eat and I'm going to have something to drink. Now, this is very important, right? Because sheep are um, very agile animals. Sheep are very fragile animals. The reason the Lord has to make them lie down in green pastures and lead them beside the still water is because sheep are frightened very easily. And they will be right in front of the very thing that they need and get so distracted that they miss the very thing that they need. They can get so, uh, 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 a wind could blow or a sound could happen. And instead of eating, they get distracted. And so what the shepherd does is he isolates the sheep and makes sure the sheep is still. You know, that in this hyper, uh, connected world where everything is so moving so quickly where we, we, we I, I'm shocked sometimes if I go four or five hours and my phone don't ring or something I'm thinking it's off or something because we're so used to being so inundated with people and I, that sometimes God has to sometimes when God wants to get your attention he's got to get you alone he, he, he makes you lie down and this is important I want to say this if there's singers in the room Notice that the reason he has to make the sheep lie down to eat is because a sheep in, our, in the ancient world's responsibility was to help carry loads. And that a sheep would work so much and carry so much that it would not even give itself the very substance it needs to be able to have the strength to carry. And, and some of us are guilty of pouring into people so much, giving so much, that we're starting to give from an empty picture. We have not learned how to say no to people. And sometimes God has got to isolate us from people and demand that we say no, because you can't give to people what you don't have. And there's so many people who are, sorry, my phone battery's getting low. There's so many people who are trying to give to people out of empty pictures. And, and, and so it's not, the, the shepherd loves the sheep so much that he, he's not content with the sheep. Not content with the sheep. He, he is not content with a sheep that keeps working but doesn't eat. So y'all can write this down. What we're seeing in this text is a shepherd that demands reciprocity. Write down reciprocity. And I'll pause if anybody have any questions. I'm going to say some things, pause, and then go to other parts. Reciprocity.
Reciprocity. This, this is important, right? Uh, and even, and I'm, I want y'all to follow my, I, I'm, I'm sometimes hyper, so I want you to follow how I'm doing this. I'm really talking about how we handle conflict and crisis through Psalms 23. And I'm also looking at some of the roles of a shepherd, a pastor from Psalm 23. So I'm, I'm talking about how you are able to handle crisis in your life from Psalm 23. But also what you should look for in a pastor through Psalm 23. Reciprocity. David says, my shepherd demands that I just not carry things and not feed myself. Right? That it's the law and principle of agriculture, right? The scripture says you can't keep taking from the ground without putting back. And some of us are guilty of giving so much that we're giving out of empty cups. Some senior who's raised your children and he raised your children's children. And now you're raising, and at some point, when is it going to be about you? You lend everybody money. Now you broke. It even goes to the church that a shepherd cannot ask members and sheep to volunteer and to give and we not pour back and give back into them. That if the church and, and the shepherd is taking from you more than he's giving to you and more than he's making sure that you replenish yourself, that may be a shepherd, but according to David, it ain't a good shepherd. So this, I need, this idea that I, 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 I lack nothing is because I have a God who demands not only that and I have a God who will make sure that my basic needs are met, but I also have a God who demands that I am not just taken from and not given back to. That, that's really important, especially for moms. and uh, I, Men do it too, but I see it with my mom um, all the time, like just giving and giving and giving and giving. She um, just went on vacation to... Uh, this weekend to uh, this week to the Bahamas, and all the time she, she's there, she's like, um, uh, "You need anything?" I'm, I live in DC. She lives in Baltimore. Um, I can cook you something before I leave. And it's like she she's so used to giving that she can't take and, and burnout is real, and especially in this time where the world is moving so fast and things are going so. You got to take time for you if you're going to survive. So the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green pastures. He leaves me silent still waters. Um, I, I, so I, I want to go to something else that, I, I, that he does that in this text. Uh, reciprocity. But then I want to look at these three ways in which God provides and helps us during difficult times. When he says that, and I'm looking at, I'm trying to do this because these scriptures are written in poetic blocks. So I know we read them line by line, but certain lines go with other lines. And so, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to lead into the next couple of lines. Um, when he says he leads me beside still waters and uh, he restores my soul, all these things are going into the nature of the sheep. Also, the thing about sheep is they have the tendency to wander off. And so when he's saying, yeah, I walk through the valley, is that sheep sometimes can get so distracted by people and places of things. And even when they're with the shepherd, the places they have to go to travel become very dangerous places. You got to think, uh, think of almost like the Jericho Road, that sheep are traveling, even with their shepherd, during dark times. There are no street lights, like we understand. Um, and, and oftentimes, a shepherd with a herd of sheep could be attacked and his sheep could be taken from him. So when the shepherd is saying, yea, though I walk through the rally, of the he's saying, as I am traveling, trying to pursue my purpose, I am not going to fear. Right? You, you got to get this. That the, the, that the sheep, even with the shepherd, is inherently living in a time and a space of vulnerability. That the nature of the world that I live in and the nature of the work that I engage in makes me vulnerable to all kinds of people. But then he says, 
but the Lord is my shepherd. It is the idea that I can travel in dangerous spaces because I have cosmic protection. I have a divine connection. I have a divine connection. Did I lose the camera? I'm sorry. There we go. Right, so my phone was on. I have a divine connection that, that secures me in unsafe places. And so this is about ultimately God's power to protect us. Listen to this. Not from certain circumstances, but in certain circumstances. David is really saying that God doesn't always deliver me from certain circumstances. He often protects me in it. And I know we talk about um, the deliverance of God. Everybody wants God to deliver them. But can I say to you, more times in your life, God preserves you in something than he delivers you out of it. Sometimes God is not trying to take you out of the storm. Sometimes he's just trying to keep you and preserve you. And I can prove it. The woman with the issue of blood, right? And uh, if you want to write this down, you can put it like this. Uh, um, walking through the valley is, uh, is God's proof that he can protect us in crisis, even if he doesn't deliver us from crisis. Let me give it to you. Let me give you a different way of looking at the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood pressed her way through the crowd. The Bible says how many times, y'all can unmute your mic, somebody. Uh, how, how long was she bleeding? Y'all there? Somebody tell me how long the woman with the issue of blood was bleeding. Okay. How many years? Seven. No, the Bible says she was bleeding 12 years. Remember? There was a woman with the issue of blood who was bleeding for 12 years. She pressed her way to the crowd and touched Jesus' garment and she was healed. We think the miracle in the text is that she was healed when she touched him. But what is the miracle? If for 12 years she's bleeding, blood means losing life, but she never lost her life. The real miracle is not that she got healed, it's that she didn't die. The Hebrew boys. God doesn't take them out of the fiery furnace. He makes them fireproof. They, they, Daniel and the lion's den. God didn't deliver him from the lion's den. He locks the jaw of the lion. In fact, he doesn't even deliver Jesus from death. He just takes death, defeat out of death. And sometimes God doesn't have to deliver you from it or get you out of it to protect you in it. Sometimes God will let you lose the job and give you more joy. You you may not get you, you may not get healed of the cancer, but what if you don't die? You may have to live with the diabetes, but what if you can have better health even when you have that health crisis? And that's what David is understanding about this shepherd that's so cold is that not only does he have to take me out of it, but sometimes he's my God in it. And, and, and because every good parent knows you can't keep delivering your child from storms. It's like that parent that say, um, when they're being bullied, no, you go out there and fight. Because although you get knocked down in the fight, I would rather you learn to fight than keep walking away from life. And sometimes God is not interested in delivering you from it. He's sometimes able to keep you in it. I'm, I'm going to wrap up because there's so many things we, we can say about this text. It's just a little taste of it. Um, he concludes, starts off with a shepherd. He goes on to this idea of reciprocity. He deals with this notion of God preserving him in it. Uh, and he kind of concludes with the mercy and, and, uh, and, and the power of God following him all the days of his life. David is telling us that we have a shepherd in God. That regardless of the crisis and things that we deal with in our lives, that God is God enough to handle them. I want to do this and... I'll, I'll be done. We could have talked some other things. I, I can go on. Um, and I almost, I, I was more organized. I was going to do this. But I, when, when I didn't come Sunday, I thought that they was going to push it back to the next time. And the deacon called me and said, no, I still need you tonight. And I was getting off work. I was 
So my mind is a little scattered, but I'm doing the best I can. But I want to do this exercise. Remember, we started talking about everything comes out of one social location. So Mrs. I keep saying Mrs. Regina. Miss Regina, can you unmute your mic for me? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I, if, if you do work, or maybe you're just a parent or do you work or tell me what you do for a living or if you're just a, a parent, whatever you do, or like a, a spouse, what do you do? What I do is I'm a caregiver for or uh, a companion for my mother for Perfect. the last couple of years. And I'm a grandmother. So um, I want you to start right there. Start right there. Because this is what I want us to do. And Mrs. Um, Mrs. Farmer, what do you do? What, what, tell me something you do. I work for the um, Hanover County Public School System. I'm also a mother and grandmother. And Are you, what do you do for the school system? I'm a behavior specialist. Okay, all right. So this is what I want us to do. And everybody who's listening, I want us to, um, I want you to read the first thing. Of, uh, Psalm 23 starts up like this, the, the, the beginning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me side of still water. I want us to take five of those verses, but I want you to write your own song. So you told me what you do for your mother, uh -huh. right? Now I want you to put that in, 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 in terms. So, uh, and I want to give yours away, but whatever you do for your mother, I want you to write that down. Then I want you to just kind of look at the Psalms again, just three or four sentences uh, about how you mirror your story and what the Lord is for you in that. Can I, that make sense? Okay. Let's let's take three minutes to do that. Everybody do it. So if you're if you are a coach, you're going to say, uh, if you're a coach, you will say, well. You can say, the Lord owns my team. We're going, we're going to win this game. Or you can say, your coach, you're going to say, uh, the Lord is my coach. I've got the best playbook. Uh, but whatever it is, you do. And then I'll, I'll, I'll write lines. All right, I see some people looking up, so. Uh, I'll read.
I'll, I'll read what I wrote. One of the things I do, one of the things that I do along with, um, I'm a minister. I work with a church here in, in D.C. Um, on its staff, as on the pastoral staff. Um, but for many years, I owned a prescription eyeglass business. Um, so I was, I'm an optician after I graduated from college. Um, I was working in nonprofits and needed some money and became an optician. And so I, I enjoyed fitting people with glasses and work with optometrists and started my own little small optical business. So um, this is what I wrote. The Lord helps me to see because of him, I'm not blinded by what's ahead. He keeps me from moving so fast. He recharges me. And when I'm weak, he reminds me that I'm his. He always treats me fair. I'm one of his children. Although evil is all around me, I am not afraid because he sees what's a, what I can't see. He protects me from all harm. When anybody else, if you want to share, if it's personal, you don't have to share. But what I want, is anybody mind sharing something they wrote? Well, I started writing, but then I put the pen down because I was, I uh, didn't, didn't want it to flow because, and then after you read that so nicely, and now, I, well, let me just, I'm just going to uh, let it flow off the top of my head. I started Absolutely. out, um, like, the Lord opens my day with a blessing with my mother, who I am blessed to share her stories that I've never heard before. He allows me to share and witness to my grandchildren, which I have access to now more than I've had in the past. He allows me to share the wisdom that he bestows upon me of those things that are here today that can um, help them and my mother um, um, physically. And she helps me. Uh, I'm, See, I'm getting all out of the... No, you're the good. Listen, you're good. 23rd no, I think you did a great job. I think you did a great job. What I wanted to do... And, then, and this, I definitely, as we all walk through the shadow of death, we definitely uh, fear no evil because we bear witness of his goodness and his mercy towards each other. And we demonstrate it through our deeds throughout the day. And we look forward. That's all I have. That was wonderful. I, 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 I like the fact when you, but you had already said it, even when I asked you what you do, I thought the first, you, you when, I, when we first used to do the exercise, I thought it was the most powerful thing. When he says, well, I'm a caregiver for my mother. And I want, I want to say this to you about way of ministering, because I want this to be affirmation. As I give care, Lord, I know you care for me. Okay. Because being a caregiver it's very difficult. And you got to know, when we talk about just taking, taking, you got to know that as I am giving care, I have someone who cares for me. I know that's right. That's got to be yourself. And I want you to write that down. As I give care, Lord, I know you care for me. I repeat it because I want you to use that. As I give care, Lord, I know you care for me. When you get frustrated, you get overwhelmed. When you're like, who's going to help me? I want you to say, when I give care, Lord, I know you care for me. Because I also want you to think about what right. it means for you to care for yourself. Yeah. That's very important. Anybody else yeah. want to share? And, 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 and listen, you, you don't have to, this is something that you, I, I'm just giving an example of that. It's something you can take time to do this week, this month, this year. Um, but I, I, I want you to, at some point, write your own song. The next time you hear somebody say, in the Bible, there's 150 songs. You ought to say, nope, 151. Mm -hmm. And you ought to give yours. Amen. Give your song to God. Amen. I, I thought I, I'm just messing with Miss Regina. I thought something was even more powerful. Uh, 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 you said, and I, every day I hear these new stories from my mother. That's so powerful. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I, he always has a new story for me. Yeah, always. So I want you to live in those things of power. So I hope you call me. If anybody feel is, want to they want to share, do you want to share, Miss Farmer? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll meet yourself. There I'm go. okay. She's, yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. But I, I want us to do this. Um, and you don't have nobody else to share, but I want you guys to cultivate that. Your own him. Um, but, but, and, and also, you know, revisit this. One of the things I didn't get to talk about is that notice David is a king. He becomes a king. But notice in this psalm, David says, and this is important when you're looking for pastors, that the, the, David didn't say, the Lord is my king. That the psalm is something where he said, talks about the royalty of God. But this is trying to show it ultimately what it means 
to be intimate with those you love. A king is above, a shepherd is with. A king reigns, a shepherd joins. A king uh, speaks down to, a, a shepherd speaks into. And, and, and when you look at, and, and, and this will show up in New, the New Testament, that, that the God of the Old Testament was in some kind of way a transcendent God, a sky God, a God that was beyond. He was transcendent. But he becomes imminent through Jesus. He made himself of no reputation, even being equal with God, came down to man, even to the death of the cross. He, it, it, was, it's a, it, is, it is God coming down because we could not go up. Uh, and that is the power of it. We'll, you hear that in the scripture. Everybody talks about the, the, one of the names we forget about Jesus in the scripture. Because um, God is not just above us. I know we think about that. You know, oftentimes when we pray, we bow our head. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. We do that out of reverence. But don't just bow your head. Turn into your heart. Well, who, he, Jesus is not disease. Remember, he's Emmanuel. Not just God above us, God with us. And when you know that you have a God who's not just above you, but a God who's with you, it makes all the difference. I apologize that my presentation was a little poor. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> uh, I, that's the best I could do. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Or a comment or anything? Okay, um, thank you so much for um, illuminating my eyes <laughs> um, so I could see more clearly from the 23rd song. It was beautiful. Never heard it in that way. So kudos mm -hmm. to you. <laughs> thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. I, I look yeah. forward to seeing you guys. Um, I think I'm supposed to be the second Sunday in July. I'm second Sunday in August. Okay. And, um, August. Yeah, so I look, I look forward to seeing you guys and sharing. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask you that when I see you, I'm going to ask about your homework. Did you, did you write? <laughs> <laughs> did you write uh, it, when, when one of the things also what, that comes to mind when you, the, the, when you were um, teaching this lesson is that the, 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 the song that um, they said, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything. I have everything and I need. Um, yeah, you make, you make sister, yeah. sister, um, yeah. Oh God, I can't think of the sister. Now, sister Kathy sings in one of our uh, choirs at church, and when she oh. sings that song, it's just so so beautiful because it's just a you know we we can bear witness to it. And Wanda also, Miss Sister Farmer is my sister. Okay. Oh. So yeah, she can identify. <laughs> I, I appreciate this, that. I appreciate yeah. That. <laughs> but I thank you for the lesson. Really so enjoyed it. Okay, let's we'll, we'll pray. We'll close out. I want to pray. Um, I, I hope you guys will have a, a week that you can be proud of for the rest of your week. I hope you do something special yeah. for yourself. Um, and sometimes yeah. it's simple as just taking a moment um, and to reflect and to rest or, or go to a, a walk in the park or call an old friend that you haven't talked to in a minute um, to recharge yourself so that you can be a better service to the world. Let, 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 let us pray. God, we thank you thank that you. we know that in you we have everything that we need. We need, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Many of us are not millionaires, and many of us don't need to be millionaires because yes. you have been able to keep us and strengthen us and sustain us with what we have. In fact, we know that little becomes much when we place it in your hand. And so, yes. God, we turn all of our challenges and our problems over to you, knowing you can fix it. God, we declare that because you're our shepherd, we're not going to worry about the price of gas. Because yes. you're our shepherd, we're not going to worry about what we're going to eat. Because you're our shepherd, while we may participate in the political process, we recognize that even if it doesn't go in our favor, that there is a hill greater than Capitol Hill. Yes. It was yes. the hill of Crowley where you gave your life. And so God, yes. for what you've done for us, we say thank you. We thank you for Thanks. this word. We thank you for David reminding us that we are protected by your divine and your cosmic blanket, that you mm -hmm. give us a security greater than any security system we could have, mm -hmm. that you, oh God, are guiding us. I pray God for each person in this Bible study. I thank you for letting them come to listen to your word. Yeah. I pray for their family members. I pray for healing in their bodies. I pray for strength in their mind. Give them strength for today and bright hopes for tomorrow. 
It is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you guys and enjoy, okay? God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We have more. Ooh. All right, let's see. Let us leave in.